welcome to Women Lead TV, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Beauchamp, owner of The Champ Group and executive director on the John Maxwell team. And I am honored to be your host of what we call Crossing Bridges. On Crossing Bridges, we discuss women in business and how they started and how they got to where they are and where they want to go. And I'm excited to introduce you to my guest today, Leilani Cure. Welcome, Leilani. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. That's such a sexy name. I love that name. <laughs> Leilani, tell our audience what your business is. So I have an HR consultancy, Be The Change HR, but it's also a social enterprise, which means right. My business is directly tied in helping the community around us, both financially and then me personally. Okay, and I wanna talk a little bit more about that because I'm so impressed that you do that. Mm -hmm. When I first met Leilani, I met her at an event of the Integris Women. And Leilani was a panelist and I thought, you know what? She's a woman who I wanna to get to know. She's a difference maker. And that was before I knew all these incredible things about you. So let's talk a little bit more about that first. So you are an HR consultant. Mm -hmm. So help people understand because this is a great opportunity for people to know more about you and your business. So where can they find you? Do you have a website you wanna promote? Or where can they find you? And tell us a little bit more about what, what is it that you, that you do? What does, what does Be The Change HR do? So my website is bethechangehr.org. Okay. And I help small businesses with their human resources. Um, most people don't like HR, and <laughs> it's that thing that people never want to deal with. And and small businesses don't have the like financial capacity to really pay someone of my caliber to come on board and make sure that they're protected. So what I do is I come into companies and I set up their human resources, mm -hmm. or sometimes I'm cleaning up things that uh -oh. are happening at HR, right? Mm -hmm. So the regulatory stuff, sometimes there's like sexual harassment claims mm -hmm. that need to be investigated, mm -hmm. handbooks that need to be written, those types of things. So I work with the very foundational HR all the way up to strategic HR. Like, you know, maybe they want to revamp the performance management program to fall in line with the, uh, the business's goals. And so I do that. And then the social enterprise part, um, I give 10% of profit back to charity. Okay, hold on, say that again. Because you kind of rolled right past that. We, yeah. want, we, want, <laughs> we want to stop and, and really hone in on that. So tell us a little bit more about that because I am impressed about that. And what made me go to that event is because I want to figure out how I can make uh, tie my business in with social enterprise. So what, what does that mean? Tell us more about what does that mean? My business has a promise, so to, like, so to speak, that what we do will be tied into philanthropy. Okay. So I've chosen two different ways to do that with my business. 10% of my profit goes back to charity. That's I used, incredible. Yeah, I used to allow my clients um, to choose that charity, but I just switched and decided I'm gonna work with an organization that is trying to help women in human trafficking situations. Okay. Called the Cupcake Girls. Okay. And then I myself am heavily involved in the community. I volunteer at WHW, work in wardrobes. I'm house mentor at a women's shelter, Wise Place. Um, I speak to the women there, and then any other, uh, I work with the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. That's I'm on a the, lot. Yeah. Can we go back a little bit? Because yeah. you're going through a lot, and I think they all deserve a little bit more attention. Mm -hmm. First, I want to start with the name of your company, because the name of your company is Be The Change. Mm -hmm. So first, I want to talk about that, because everything else you talked about and addressed has to do with changing. So how did you come up with the name Be The Change HR? In my career, I was trying to figure out a way where I could marry the two things that I really love, mm -hmm. human resources and philanthropy. Okay. So I have this concept, and this is my fourth business, by the way. Okay. I have this concept, <laughs> like, how do I put these two things together? And so for years, I was thinking, like, do I need a nonprofit? Like, how do I set this up? Um, and then I had one of those years that wasn't the easiest year for me, but all the events led up to me making the decision to start a business, but this time one with more purpose. And so, um, again, this was a, a difficult year for me, but this is kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. My grandfather had passed away, and on the plane flight home, mm -hmm. right before you know, I land, it pops in my head, you'll call the company Be The Change HR. Oh, so you were thinking about starting a company, yeah. mm -hmm. but you weren't sure what you were going to call it. Correct. And your grandfather passed away, mm -hmm. and and somehow that connected with what you could call the company. 
Well, truth be told, I also have the quote tattooed on my back. Oh, so. oh okay, now we're good. We're, we're, we're right. digging deeper now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was an important quote I put on um, put on me years ago. Okay. And so it just it just made sense. Start your company. Have it be a purposeful company. Have it be a social enterprise. And what more perfect would be to change HR? Okay. Because it's not only you know human resources that can help transform your company because. I make HR easy, okay. but also the philanthropic aspect of it right. is, well, we're helping change people's lives, just exactly. in, in my little world, and that is very important to me. Okay. Yeah, you say that with passion, and I know when we talked before, I can tell that it is, yeah. and so, and I love that. I mean, that's such a great name, being a change HR, mm -hmm. and you are living it, and so you were beginning to share some of the companies and some of the organizations that you work with, mm -hmm. so let's, let's kind of go back to that. Okay. So. You mentioned the human trafficking. Cupcake girls. Okay. Yes. And that's important to you because? It's just one of those things that I was called to years ago. I knew I'm going to somehow help in that area. Um, yeah. And it just naturally happened when I was out in Vegas on business yeah. that someone I was meeting said, you have to meet this woman, Joy. Um, and she has a nonprofit called the Cupcake Girls. So a couple weeks ago when I was in Vegas on business again, I met with her and I decided at that point, like this feels right, I'm gonna do the 10% for her, her nonprofit to help women. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. And then you also, cause that's a big challenge, but also you mentioned WHW, can you say a little bit more about that? Great, WHW great organization and too. also working wardrobes. I teach okay. a LinkedIn class. Right? Okay. So it's you're kind of, busy. I am. Um, <laughs> it's really important when you're looking for a job to learn how to utilize that sure. platform to its full potential. And so um, I teach the class, and I like to think that I'm funny. I try to crack jokes because <laughs> it's you know you're working on a computer like a computer with a, with a platform and right, and, and it's really important. So I think little steps to help people get back into the workforce. That's definitely one of them. Oh, awesome, mm -hmm. awesome. And then women help and women and men, you work with them too? Yeah. At WHW, okay. WHW, Wise Place. Wise Place, okay. Wise Place is a unassisted women's shelter. They have an emergency shelter where 60 women sleep. They have a program where 30 women go through a 90 day program. And they have another program called the Positive Steps House. So I speak to the women in the 90 day program, just inspirational stuff. And then um, the Positive Steps House, I meet with them once a month and we sit down and either I'll bring in um, a financial planner to talk about financial wellness or I will do something. My mom came one month and painted with them, but it's just spending time to help them get back on their feet because this is the last step for them to become fully independent. You know, I think that's so incredible that you do that. And I have a question. When you go and you spend time with them and you inspire them, what do you leave? Two, two questions. What are you giving to them, part one, and what do you get in return? Uh, support. So I'm trying to support them. You know, like have another woman there. What do you need? Like I brought in, like I said, financial planners, attorneys, working on resumes and that type of thing. Um, it's important for them. And then just to have someone there. Like I'm committed. I'm okay. committed to helping. So you're a person that yeah. cares about them. Yeah. You're yeah. showing that. And what do you get from all that? Right? Oh man. Um, all the work I do, I think, and, and it, it kind of goes back to a rough time that I went through. Um, when I came out of that, I made a promise that I would help other people mm -hmm. kind of get back on their feet too. Okay. And so that's sort of what drives me like underneath that I don't share a lot with them. Mm -hmm. Some of the women I do, so some of the women I tell them like, listen, I know what it's like to be where you're at. And you look at me and you think like, there's no way. And I'm like, well, I know, like, I know where you're at. Um, and, I, and I hope for them, what I do now is that you turn around and you, you help others. You know, so you're sticking yeah. to what you, you have the conviction to do that. It's like the visual of like just stepping up and then you reach your hand down and I come with you. Exactly. Right. Because right. okay. you can do it too. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And Lilani, you mentioned and you said that you had a tough time mm -hmm. and I admire you so much. I told you, I, I when I met you, I thought, oh, I got to get to know her a little bit better. So I really do. Without going too much into it. There are people watching right now who might have experienced some challenges too and felt like there's no way I'm just gonna be here forever. And maybe not them, but maybe someone close to them. So if you don't mind, can you share a little bit about what that was mm -hmm. and talk about crossing bridges, what it was, but how did you go from where you were to get to where you are? 
such a journey. Um, mm-hmm. When I look back, there there have been times where I would just burst into like happy tears mm-hmm. and appreciation for you know what I've done and, and what I've been. Mm-hmm. And so to to kind of go over what's happened with me is I I battled severe depression for years and that parlayed into drug addiction. Mm. And so I have hit rock bottom so many times, I can't even tell you, um, in very difficult situations. And what happened with me is one day after years of this, mm. I woke up, and this is in the middle of my career, this is not like in the beginning. You know, I, I started working in human resources very naturally when I was 16 in payroll. By the time I was in college, I was running payroll for um, multi-state thousands of employees wow but then I had a time period where I just I just lost it all right depression the drug addiction and one day I just woke up and I thought if I continue to do this like I'm I'm really gonna die mm. I cannot live here anymore and it was something very simple at the time I didn't have I, you know I'm lucky that my family was taking care of me but um, I didn't have anything to my name and I thought you just have to take that next step I quit everything. I ended up leaving. Just like that. Just like that. I ended up leaving all those people in that world behind. Wow. Like, just ghosted everyone. Um, started looking for a job, did payroll. I did payroll for it because such an interesting woman. She was a, a corset maker and also a dominatrix. And she would, <laughs> and she was also 65. It was just an interesting situation. And she paid me minimum wage, but I didn't care. I didn't care. I was like, okay, just just make yourself a little bit of money, and then look for that next step. And that's exactly what I did. It was that job, and then another job that paid a little bit more, mm-hmm. and then doing side jobs, mm-hmm. and then you know finally I got a full time job at a company that I admired, and then that's when I started slowly like climbing the corporate ladder until I got to an executive position. But it's not something where you can just go from rock bottom and then turn around and, and you change overnight, you have to take these small steps, incremental steps. And so when I talk to the women at Wise Place, that's what I tell them. You don't go from, you know, having everything taken away from you and hitting rock bottom and, you know, and really putting yourself in this situation to the next day being financially stable and getting good credit and, you know, right. it doesn't happen that way. Um, and you can't kick yourself either for not being able to do that. What you do is you just, okay, what's that next? tiny little step I can take. If you're looking for a job, fine. Tomorrow I'll apply to three different places. Okay, so set, yeah. set some goals. Yeah, and achievable ones. Not Achieve, the realistic, ones. right? Yeah. The whole smart goals, make them realistic and achievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you strike me as a person of a lot of courage. Yes. You are courageous. <laughs> you got an epiphany that if you didn't stop, you were going to die. It scared you enough to stop. So one point to the people who are in the valley and want to come out of the valley and move up the mountain, cross the bridge, Mm -hmm. is to recognize, take an action, Mm -hmm. even if it's just one little action, and then take another action and then another one. So you're giving guidelines about how to take the steps. Another thing that you mentioned, Leilani, is that you separated yourself from a group of people. Yeah, you have to. And how hard was that? It was actually really easy. Because? I had to make the change. Again, it was just this, this all of a sudden, like, you have to change it right now. Okay. And so I just left it all So you had a sense of urgency. Yeah, and I've had, I've had, you know, you know, Instagram, Facebook, people can find you. So I've had right. some people, like, I thought you died, I thought something happened to you, you just disappeared. You know, can we talk? And I'm like, I don't respond. Okay. I, I mean, to me, I don't owe them anything. Like, yeah. I just don't want to be near that anymore. Um, and so I, I, I moved on. So you also have self control. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you have self control. And much research says we have to really pay attention to the five people that we hang out with the most because they can bring us up or they can push us down. So for those of you who are watching, you know, it's all about pruning. Who are we hanging out with that's lifting me up? They know where I'm trying to go. You mentioned your family, mm-hmm. so your family supported me. Who are the people who support me in my life that can lift me up compared to those who will say, 
you know what? You're never going to come out of this. You might as well just relax and, and make this your home because you're never going to come out of this. So those are the people who want to separate from it. I applaud you mm -hmm. for being able and willing. You had to be able and you had to be willing yeah. to take that leap. Yeah, and it, it's been a long process. You know, it's it's been years and years and years and years, over a decade of, of you know, taking these small incremental steps. And so when I, there, I, I said uh, two years ago I'd start speaking on this. Okay, and so you made a commitment. Yeah, I Another did. Another commitment. And I remember walking in my first speech, and I bought a dress specifically for this, and <laughs> I, I remember um, I, I, I burst into tears. I thought, if, if rock bottom me could see me now, like I could just tell her, like, we'll be fine, baby doll. Like, look, look at us now. Everything's gonna be okay. And they weren't kidding me. That's a great story. Thank yeah. you for sharing yeah. that. And you are committed also to a lot of physical work. So, tell us about that. I know you, you've done the Olympic distance run. Uh, so, yeah. so I'm like, okay, you go, girl. So, <laughs> so tell us a little bit more about that. And I know you have one other thing that you're thinking about doing, but yeah, share with yeah. us some things that you've done. Um, I'm a mountaineer, so I, I backpack, I hike, I mountaineer, I ice climb. Uh, and I'm also ice climb. I ice climb, like with the ice picks and the whole nine. I think it's so empowering when I do that. I bet. Yeah. That sounds empowering. Definitely. I don't think I'm going to try it, but it does sound empowering. <laughs> um, and this year, I'm, I, I'm about this close to signing up for a half Ironman. Say that again. I'm about this close to signing up for a half Ironman. I'm, I'm mentally almost ready to prepare myself for the training. Six okay. days a week, two hours a day. Six yeah. days a week, two hours a day. Yes. How will, you know, so other people think about that kind of thing too. Mm -hmm. You know, I shared with you, I, I've done the 39 mile walk and I mm -hmm. did the 60 mile walk for breast cancer. Mm -hmm. So I had to really, there was a lot of mental preparedness for that as well as a lot of physical. Mm -hmm. How will you decide whether or not this is what you want to do? You already know you have, you are physically capable. Mm -hmm. How will you decide that this is what you want to do? Like what will be your why behind it? It's not the end goal. It's not, I'm, you know, I want to accomplish the Iron Man. It's the idea that I am going to mentally prepare myself <coughs> to dedicate myself to this entire journey. Okay. And you that's the part I love. Okay. Am, am I going to say, I will commit to six days a week, uh -huh. swimming, a biking, running, my diet, my time, the scheduling, um, and, and once I do, I love that feeling of saying, I'm, I'm going to commit to this okay. and then executing on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's that's what I love. You have a deadline and when you're going to make that decision. The training will have to start um, the middle of April. Oh, okay. Means, so, okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to oh. decide in the next couple of weeks. Okay. So mm -hmm. we're going to just wish upon you that you make the decision that's right for you. <laughs> 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 and so before we go, Leilani, what quote might you have or what book have you read that you would like to share with the audience that helped you stay courageous? And be the conqueror and the difference maker that you are. Yeah, yeah. Be the change you wish to see in the world is obviously a very important quote to me. Um, but also this Japanese proverb that says, uh, fall down seven times and get up eight. Oh. You just have to keep going. Oh, uh, say, say that again. Fall down seven times. Okay. No, fall down eight. No, fall down seven times, get up eight. Okay, yeah. that's cute. Fall down seven times, get up eight, because if you keep trying, then you will get to where you want to go. It's that bridge again. Yes. You know, I told you, I had a fear of bridges, so that's why I talk about the bridge to me. Fall down seven times, get up eight. And with that, thank you so much, Leilani, for, for being uh, our guest today. And we want to thank you for tuning in, and we will see you next time on Women Lead TV.